<laughs> We're getting real close to the camera, buddy. I don't think this is going to work too well. Maybe not. Wow. All right, so. Yes. This is, uh, this car has a lot of history with you. I think this is your first foray. See that 50 cent word I'm using yes, this morning? Yes, word, yes. Um, into uh, the VW Porsche era. We don't talk about VW. Well, it says right on the back, Volkswagen. Yeah, it has to. So I don't, you know, I'm not making this stuff up. That's true. They're, you know, they're, they're brethren companies as far as I'm concerned. We talked about this car Many on years the Adam ago. Carolla podcast. Alan, is it Adam or Alan? Alan? Alan Corona. Alan Carolla? Alan? I don't remember. But anyways, mm. um, this was, I think, how we met. This car yes. came on the show. That's true. And uh, I brought this one because I thought it was more unusual. I had the 959 at the time. And I thought, hey, yeah. everyone's got a 915. I'll bring a 914. And you knew that I wouldn't like it anyway, so oh, there you I, go. I did not anticipate that one, but yeah. So Who could have read between the lines on that? Anyways, uh, back to the, uh, the 914. Yep. Uh, a long history of this car. Great stories, too, behind it, which is too part many. of, part of the, the fun of this car because um, this was kind of like your first engine swap, engine. Right. Well, I got like 12 stories. But well, let's start with uh, the first one. Let's start, start, so, at, start so, at the beginning. It's so always the beginning. good to start at the beginning. So, so I, um, I bought this car before I even had a, a, an apartment or hotel or anything like that uh, here. Single in, or married? Single, very single. All right, this seems like a it. Single guy's car, kind of. But I um, uh, came out here to LA. I was working for Hughes Space and Communications, and I decided I wanted a 914 because my ex-girlfriend's dad had one uh, in upstate New York. I drove it around and uh, muffler fell off, you know, all that good stuff that happens in 914s. I'm like, oh, that was a fun car, you know, and they're about 3,000 bucks back then, which is, you know, it was like 25, it was actually 30 years ago. So that's a, that's a pricey car years. though. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I bought it, and there's three types of 914s uh, engine-wise. There's a 17, a 18, and a two liter, and of course the, the six 9 cylinder. 914 6. 6, it was four actually. But I wanted, um, I had driven her car, uh, her dad's car around in upstate New York and it was a 1.7. And it's the only one I'd ever driven. So I came out here and said, I want a two liter. I did all the research, went online. The internet was still newish back then, but I went to Dave Darling's 914 website. I was like, okay, I want a two liter. www dot something, right? I want a 73 <laughs> two liter, okay? So I found one for sale from some guy, a fireman at the uh, LAX airport. Went down there, I'm like, oh, okay. I popped the hood, looked completely different from um, my ex-girlfriend's dad's car. I'm like, ah, oh, that's what a two liter looks like. And I'm like, all right. So I'm like, oh, all right. So he's like, the guy hands me the keys, says, go take it for a test drive. But that's never actually happened since. You know, I was like, go ahead, take it. I guess I looked okay. You're not gonna 25. carjack him. No, no, he's a fireman or whatever. Anyway, so I took it, drove it around. I'm literally driving around and uh, around uh, LAX here, and it's like, oh, lots of power. I'm like, oh, so this is what a two liter feels like. This feels so much more powerful than the other. All right, so we go there, make a deal for the car, bring it home, and then of course, like any other car that's what 20 or 30 years yeah. old, you need parts. So I take it down to Autos in Venice. Um, and while I'm there, I run into a guy named Tom Gould and Tom comes out, he's like a really nice guy, comes out and talks about the car. He looks at the car. I'm like, yeah, it's a two liter. It's like a blah, 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 blah. So he goes, oh, let's take a look at it. I know so he where he's out. going with yeah, this. Yeah, you've heard this story before. <laughs> no, I had to remember. Oh, you well, you if, you didn't, if you didn't tell it to me two days ago, how would I remember? Oh, that's true. Okay. So, you know, so, given that. So he comes out and he's like, oh, he's like, oh, this is a, this is a great looking 1.8 liter. And I'm like, no, no, it's a two liter. And the guy, Tom is a really great guy and really you know, nice guy and all that. He's like, he didn't want to like insult me or anything. He didn't want to let the kid down. But he's like, huh. He's like, well, it's got the 1.8 fuel injection on it. He looks under, he's got the 1.8 exhaust. It's got the 1.8 heads. It's got the 1.8 ECU. He's got the one, he's like, hmm. And, and, and the part I'd forgotten to tell you is that I wanted to make sure it was a two liter and all that. So I took it for a pre-purchase inspection to the Porsche dealer, to Vashik. Polak, ah, which, yeah. which was down the street from, from my, my house. I literally could have just shifted the car into neutral and rolled it into the shop. It was that close. Anyway, I went in there and it said, make sure this is a two liter. That's the only thing I wanted. And they came back, yeah, it's all good, two liter. Anyway, 
So, so the after, dealership let you down too. Well, I'm getting to that. After Tom, after Tom came back, I was really pissed. I'm like, oh my God, I already put a lot of work into the car or whatever. So I drove right back to Vashek Polak and I literally, I stood, I stood yeah, like this. So I'm like, <laughs> and they brought the old guy out with the gray hair and he popped the hood. He's like, oh yeah, that's a 1.8. And the- Was he uh, smoking the, a cigarette like this? So. Yeah. It wasn't Vashik himself. But, he, but it was, uh, you know. No. But anyway, they're like, oh, sorry about that. And they refunded my pre-purchase inspection. Then I called the guy up who I bought it from, and he didn't know. He I, didn't, I, I didn't. Fireman. He, What's he, he know about he, Porsches? Well, he always thought it was a, a two-liter and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. So I got a couple hundred bucks back from him. But there's two parts. The two conclusions of the story is that the guy, Tom, who told me the car was the wrong engine, it was so nice to me. That became my business partner for Pelican Parts, which we formed and built into, you know, multi-million dollar parts business and then sold. We, to we wouldn't be here today now with That's these beautiful correct. cars That's without correct. this car. Without this car, with this guy, without him telling me that this engine was wrong. If this, if the guy told you this was a 1.7, you'd probably be living in, uh, you know, some yeah, single bedroom shack single working for state farm insurance or doing something like that. Yep. Nah, I'd be working for aerospace. You'd be do, working for aerospace with right. a large pension, but that'd be right. it. So what do you do when you find out your car is got, by the way, the 1.8 liter engine is the lowest horsepower engine they ever offered for this. Cause so I thought I had the best one and I had the worst one and I did everything right. I took it to Vashik Polak. I'm like, I said, guys, dealership make, Sure. Doesn't yeah. matter what, what ethnicity the dealer is, German, English, uh, 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 stealership. That's what you okay. need to remember. Right. So what do you do when that happens to you? You say, screw it. I'm gonna put the highest horsepower engine you could possibly put into the car. And that's kind of what it's got right now. So that's what- By the way, it didn't look like this. We'll, we'll cut in the picture of what it looked like. It's on my wall. Um, but um, but what got, what got you the bug to to drop this different motor in the car uh, instead of just driving the, the crap out of it? Because it probably drove okay. It's the mental thing. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted a two liter. I got a one eight. Driving around, so, mm, it's like getting the iPhone Pro and you realize it's like an iPhone well, Can't you 6, just buy that JC know? Whitney, rebore your engine with pellets in the gas tank and you know pump up the you know the horsepower? You could. You could because that still was still the they were still in business probably when you did this car. Rebuild your engine, more horsepower, add no. some of that battery additive for more juice. So, correct, correct. You can do that, or you can spend a lot of money putting a 914.6 engine, which is a nine, engine from a 911. Is this uh, now? Let's let's jump to the modern days where this this uh, swap. Are we gonna have appears. enough memory cards for this car? Yeah. All right, we got an hour, right? <laughs> Um, so you, 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 you got the bug to swap the motor, which by the way, that's, you know, natural, more horsepower, larger yeah. engine, you know, it sounds different. Too. Sound, yeah. I, I can't, the people who own the 914.4, like, uh, 914 it's a VW. Isn't blah, blah, blah. that a basically a VW engine? It, it is. It is. And it's a great car. Not knocking it because they work okay, but who wants a VW? It's a great car with the four cylinder, but it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a performance race car with the six. The six just hums and it sounds, sounds good. And you, unless you have that funky thing that we saw at SEMA with the Tesla where you pipe in a 914 <laughs> sound. Six type yeah. sound. No. 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 It's, this is the Clear. way to go. Hey, and we'll get we'll get some video of this in a minute and you'll see. So I went kit? No, I went, bought another car that had a six in it. <laughs> that was a piece of crap. It literally was like the worst I don't know why this guy spent so much money on this guy. He spent like at the time, it was a lot of money. It was 12 grand. So this is 30, well, can, 25 can, years would you, ago. Uh, might we ask what you paid for this one? I paid 2,700 for it, but it didn't look like this again. 2,700 for this. Uh, and then I paid like 12 for the yellow car with the six and the, it had all the stuff in it, but it was a terrible, terrible car. I drove it all the way home and it broke down on the way home 20 feet from my driveway. <laughs> Now, why wouldn't the, you have- The gear shift came out in my hand. Now, why wouldn't you have fixed that car up with the already six instead of, you know, tampering with the VW4? Be because I'd already spent a bunch of time working on this oh, one. okay. This is my baby. This is one I spent right. looking at. It was a really, by the way, this 1.8 lowest horsepower engine you can possibly get in the 914.4 
was one of the nicest cars you could possibly get. So the interior Clean, in this, nice. I'm sure you get shots in a minute. I have not done anything with the interior. Did it have that smelly German nope. plastic stuff? No. That, no I like is, that smell, like VWs and stuff. No, you get is, inside dangerous chemicals. No, that's the everything else in this room smells like that, but this one's pretty good. So it's really, it was really well taken care of and all that stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, cut to the chase, man. Engine, let's hear about it. Oh, well, it had a 2.7 S motor. Watch out for him. 2.7 S motor in it. Um, and uh, it was a mag, uh, it was a mag case, which is, I could talk for hours on the magnesium engines. Um, good for anyway, a fire. What? Good for a fire. Yeah, good for a fire, but also good for pulling head studs and stuff like that. So the 2.7 S motor had a lot of problems. We pulled head studs. Um, you know, 911 motor. So what I did is I put the two cars next to each other in the garage and just swapped everything. So I was driving in Palos Verdes, and and back then, this is in the early days, because you know, event, you know, everyone black thinks, and white TV, radio, no, no cell phones talk, or well, uh, yeah, no iPhones, no. Okay, well, so I didn't know what I was doing on these cars, and I put the fan belt on wrong. Let's just leave it at that. And then I'm driving along. Radiator boil over. There's no radiator. That was a little joke there. <laughs> yeah, throw it, uh, it didn't boil over, but um, <laughs> the engine did. So I'm driving along and all of a sudden I look down and the temperature's all the way in the red. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. So I pull over to the gas station and I open the hood and it's literally like one of those Castrol motor oil commercials where you Smoke. hear, no, you hear the engine sizzling. I literally hear the oil sizzling inside the engine like, a, like I'm making an omelet. And I'm like, this is, this is not good. So. <laughs> But I let it cool down. I'm like, maybe it'll fix itself. It's a Porsche, you know? 50% of the time, yeah, they just sort car. of go, yeah. They're durable. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a VW family. Yeah, yeah. So it drove fine for about five miles, and then every single head stud pulled out. So the thing's just making exhaust noises and all that, because when it gets over here, it's like, ah, so I ruined my engine because of the fan belt. I hope you saved the casing on that somewhere. You know, like... Uh, well, okay, no, so, so... As a mistake, like, learn from your mistakes. Well, I did better than that. I wrote a book on how to rebuild engines. I have and that I used too, that. Yeah, I used that engine, the one I cooked personally, as the engine that's been rebuilt in the book. I sold off all the parts for that. But um, the little secret is everyone sees me building the engine in the book and all that stuff. That thing never went together. We just assembled it for photos. Don't all too much all away. my laying out of the glue and all that stuff or whatever, it's all, it's all, that particular yeah. engine wasn't really put together. So, yeah. But you've helped a lot of people, needless to say. It's funny because it sat on an engine stand and people are like, oh, when are you going to run that? I'm like, never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> never. It, it would leak out of every orifice and it wouldn't probably have zero compression. I, I think for the photos, I'm not even sure if I put the rings in on some of the pistons because they needed to slide in there or whatever. So you do what you need to do for photos. But anyway, so that blown up engine became the fodder for the engine rebuild book. That's, uh, and, and again, uh, that's one of many, many stories from this car. Well, I'm not done. So we parked, we parked the car, and it didn't look like this. So it wasn't blue, but it had the flares and all that stuff. So we parked the car down the street, and then I'm at my house, 2.30 in the morning, and the doorbell rings. And you know that's never a good thing. No, it's usually the PD. Yeah, no, your phone shouldn't ring at 2.30 from one of your relatives, and the PD shouldn't ring your doorbell at 2.30. Or Child Protective Services, that's the other one. CPS? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want that visit. That's true. Um, so anyway, the cops said, oh, do you own a 914 signal? Like, oh, yeah, I do. I was like, uh, where, where is it? It's in a warehouse parking garage down the street. Well, we just saw it doing 100 miles an hour on Western in, in, uh, in Lomita. I'm like, what? So they stole the car, and my, I don't know if I should say this on camera, but my assistant at the time had left the keys in the car, in the storage center. Children, don't do that. Very, very bad. Bad, bad, bad. So what you're saying is, don't leave the keys in the car to get stolen. Yeah, yeah. Make it's, it a little tougher. Yeah. Make it a little challenging. So I thought the guy who stole it was taking on a joyride. It's kind of funny, because we, 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 we went down to every, every warehouse on the block, got video cameras, and we could see the guys. This one guy came in with a truck, he was trying to steal some motorcycles that he thought was in there, and he found this there instead with the keys and ignition. He didn't know how to drive stick. You see the thing going down the block like this, and I'm like, oh God. This has got really high horsepower motor, so you can really probably, you can yeah, wind it up. And you can, you can figure it out, because well, it was kind of forgiving. So anyway, there's no way to make this long story too short. So, um, long and short of it, no, no. Um, so being here at Pelican, 
I said, you know what, someone took the car. I said, I bet they took it for a joyride and left it somewhere. And uh, so I took um, 20 of my employees and I printed out papers and I sent all 20 of them out in their cars to scour the neighborhood. And we put this five mile radius. Did you have like a big like I did, a, I did. A thing with, I did. with I had yarn? A I had a not yard. I didn't have any yard. Not like a like CFA. beautiful, beautiful mind. They only freaking do that in the TV shows. They don't do that. In I, I don't know. I could no. see you having some big, crazy. I did. I did. I had a big board. I printed it all out. I marked off. So we drove down every single street looking for this car. They came back in a Honda that was stolen. And I have this on the video camera. So and the Honda had a little piece of the bumper removed. So in our in our movement of of around the neighborhood, we didn't find this car, but we found the Honda. Honda did find a Honda, called the police in and they towed it and all that. Probably shouldn't have towed it. That was probably a mistake. Probably just have sat on it. But you know, this is back when police were more interested in solving crime than they are today like this. But anyway. We'll they, avoid those political statements here on this show. Anyway, um, so, so the problem with this car and being stolen was that I kept getting clues like every three days about where it was and all that stuff. And I was really- Like, like people would call in the hotline you set up? Um, not quite, but but not 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 too far from that. So I literally went out every night at um, at two o'clock, and on the video we saw this truck. It was a truck that was a, a, a refrigerated truck, um, and it come here. And I, we think the guy was trying to steal some motorcycles that had formerly been in that storage center, but we had just moved this in there a couple of days later, and the motorcycles were gone. Um, but anyway, the truck had been stolen, and it said Golden West Foods on the side. So we called Golden West. Oh yeah, our truck was stolen. Blah 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 blah. We have you seen Man, it? Yeah, this is like a crime ring. This the connection of we got Hondas, Porsches, meatpacking trucks. Yeah, I'm only one third the way through. Holy so crap. So um, so, so we we then um, we then called Golden West and they said, oh yeah. So so they said the truck was stolen, all that stuff. So I started looking at every, at two o'clock in the morning. I started looking at every single storage lot in the area for that this truck. Because I figured, find the truck. Find the car. Find the car. Smart, you are some right? kind of genius, yeah. I think. Right? Yeah, Where you I get thought this? that was pretty good, right? That's, a, that's your higher education. So my wife, my wife, she's usually with me when I'm telling this story. She's like, yeah, every night, he was out to 3 a.m. She's, she's thinking, this dude's crazy. He got this VW that's stolen, and, and, and you know, just go buy a new one. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so. Um, but there's history here. There yeah. is. There's there history. Is. So, um, um, the Golden West guys, they got a phone call from someone else. This truck would have been see spotted at someone else's building and they backed into a pole. And this guy was really pissed at this. He's a bollard, you know, and he's pissed at his bowl. So he called Golden West yelling at him. Oh, the truck was stolen, blah, blah, So I'm like, I remember the date. It was May 5th because it was my kid's birthday. And May Day or something, right? Cinco de Mayo. Something like that. And I'm like, I called my wife and I'm like, I'm just going to go check out where the truck was seen last. And then I'll be over to, I don't know, Kids crying. No, it was uh, yeah. California Birth Pizza Kitchen. Or Birthday like that. Yeah. party. Kid, dad's late. Yeah. Yeah, kids yeah. crying. With daddy, dad, dad. You're looking for the stolen VW. Yeah. VW. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. So, um, Porsche. Stolen Porsche. Porsche. That's what I said. Yeah. Um, so the um, so I drove there and then. Um, See, I, I also hired a private detective to try to help me find the car. See too. the madness going on. Yeah, here. yeah. Madness. So my friend Paul is a private detective, helped me out with some stolen Porsche that I was involved with a long time ago. That's another story. But anyway, so. Um, anyway, and you talk about focus and me, man. Focus. I called my I called my private detective guy. I said I'm just checking out the place where the truck was last seen, and I'm going to drive uh, to the kid's birthday party. But I'm going to drive around the neighborhood see if I can see the truck. So as soon as I hit end on the phone, I drive a street and boom, there's the truck. And I'm like, so I call him back. I'm like, no way! I found the truck. The truck is right here. And this is it's a truck that had been stolen. The guy had tried to rip the stickers off the side, but they were all like, you know, messed up or whatever. And you could yeah, totally see it was the stuff. Yeah. And he'd spray painted the wheels black on the truck to try to disguise it. But it was the truck. I'm like, I couldn't believe. It. So then I started scouring the neighborhood, you know, looking for because it was with the truck was parked in one of those spots where on the left side of the truck was industrial, on the right side was um, uh, houses and stuff. So I started looking around and all that stuff or whatever. And I couldn't find it, I couldn't find it. Paul, my private investigator, said, go there and wait on the truck. I'll be there in a minute, you know? So I'm sitting there waiting on the truck, you know? I'm like, not right behind it, but I'm like trying to be like CSI. Like, I'm, and I'm driving. So with, a, with, a, with a magazine, with a, you know, magazine or newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. I'm driving a 1998 BMW, older BMW, 
but odd for that neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, yeah, not, not quite seen in that neighborhood. So I'm not super in cut, it's not a brand new BMW, it's still 20 years old, but still kind of odd looking. So that's important to the story. So anyway, so I'm behind the truck. I'm sure it is. Like three or four cars parked on the side, just waiting for it. And all of a sudden the truck takes off. <laughs> what the? I'm like, what? What do I call Paul? What do I do? So he says, call the police. So I call LAPD and I'm on the phone with them, the Bluetooth, and I'm following the truck now. Okay. I don't think they like that. But... No, they told me not to follow. The... <laughs> don't follow the truck. I said, no, I'm following the truck. Don't follow the truck. I'm like, no, I'm still following the truck. No. It's like, don't do that. <laughs> so we're going around Gardena. The guy went to Compton now. So we're in Compton. That's a nice, getting, uh, getting back little, in the day is a nice neighborhood. Getting a little, getting a little uh, dicier. And he goes to a battery recycling place. So I see the guy get out of there. It's the same guy we saw in the video. This is the guy who stole the car. He walked, he walked right by, I'm sitting in there. He walked right by the car carrying the battery like this. And I'm like, I had, a, drove, cha wait, I had wait, a chance wait, to run him over. Wait, wait, but so no. he's driving a semi truck like truck. It's a refrigerated um, panel truck. Okay, so he's driving a, like a rider truck. Yeah, a, a relatively large truck yeah. to take back a recycled battery. Yes. So yes, what is he going to get? Like eight dollars? Eighteen. Eighteen dollars. Said on a big sign on the on the store. Battery. Eighteen paid for. He course. couldn't. This is this is what I don't get about like criminals. Uh, criminals, if you're watching this, uh, think about some of the stuff you're doing. Yeah. Don't take a stolen truck to take back an eighteen dollar battery. Yeah. If you're going to steal something, st steal big. Maybe. Well, honestly, is that the right? Honestly, that's 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 true. And and the guy was a meth addict, out oh, on well, out, out on parole for rape. But we'll get to that in a minute. The See, story like, gets the story nice gets better. Guy. Yeah, exactly. So um, and let, let me throw this back just for a reminder for for our viewers. Uh, there's still a birthday party awaiting you. Yes, yes. This is the birthday. I never made it to the birthday party. Spoiler. Kids alert. crying. No, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say anything about that fathering here, Wayne. Well, I told the story when I was done, and their eyeballs are like this. So, no. So anyway, so I'm following this guy around LA, and LAPD never came. So the guy gets back in the truck after the gets the rest. I'm following around, and then I, 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 I'm not an expert at following people, especially in a 1998 BMW, and the guy made me. <laughs> and like now all of a sudden he starts doing these weird maneuvers. He cut through a, he's in a panel truck that's like 25 feet long. He cut through a shopping center, you know, with a next to a Rouse and he's trying to lose me. And like I pull over to the side and he's going by me. And I'm like following him still. And he's looking right at me and I'm looking right at him. And I'm like, I don't know if the guy's got a gun. I don't have a gun. Yeah, well, you know he doesn't have a battery. At least. He doesn't have a battery, right. So I'm like, I'm like, you know, I don't want to get too close to this guy because I know nothing about him. I know all about him now, but I know nothing about him at the time. So, and then I was thinking, and later on, someone told me, he said, that guy was probably scared shitless at you because he's like the guy in the BMW following his drug lord kingpin guy is now following him. He's like, who is this guy following me in this BMW? Well, you, you could be right, because if he was desperate enough to pull $18 for a battery in a stolen truck. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. So anyway, so I'm following this guy and he pulled into an industrial park where there's lots of buildings and stuff like that. So I followed him in there and it's big, big. And I, I, I waited at the entrance and then he disappeared inside there. And I'm like, I can't go anywhere. And then I'm like, wait a minute, what if there's a back entrance? So I went to the back oh, and there's a back exit. And he has slipped out. I was so pissed that the guy had gotten away. I was really, really angry and I called Paul. Paul lives in Malibu, my private detective guy, and he's still stuck in three hours with the traffic or whatever. So I'm like, Paul, all right, I'm going back to the place where I found the truck originally, but I'm really pissed that I lost, lost the truck. So we went back there, then we went to the battery store, recycling place, and we tried to shake down those guys to find out who the guy was. Those guys are like Teflon, you know? I called five of my largest employees to meet me there, you know, to try to like get some answers out of the battery guys. Didn't work. Didn't work. We were looking at all the cars they had stored behind the fence. I thought my car was there, but no. The 914 is a very distinctive, not super, uh, you know. Yeah. Attra yeah. Okay. What is? You can identify a 914 on her cover easily. So, um, and by the way, none of this made up. This is a hundred percent true. Well, it's you know, it's a touch of the crazy there that you go this far yeah, that you have is. the private investigator. Okay. So you're not the first person to tell me that. So yeah, don't mess with Wayne. That's a very bad idea. But the, I kept getting fed little bits of information every three days. So I was like ready to give up. <sighs> like the, the womp womp Charlie Brown kind of you know, music in the background. And then all of a sudden something would come in with a new lead. I'm like, yes! Like every three days. And this is, by the way, this is all it took over like two months, this story. It didn't happen overnight. So anyway, 
So we're back at the bat. Back at the battery recycling place. So Paul and I, I sent my five employees. By the way, that's a scary, scary place. We got a lot. Well, you were in Compton at Compton. a battery recycling place. Right, right. And my, I had my BMW with me, and then Paul had the same car, but a Mercedes. It's kind of funny. Both like 25 years old, what are older. And that's important to the story, too. But Paul is like a private, he's got like a mustache and a silver goatee. He's dressed all in black. Knows how to handle himself. Packing a. You know. He is. He was. Um, but anyway, so we had random people from the liquor store across. The Whoa, what are you guys doing? Because I had a flashlight. I'm looking at the place, whatever. So there's a lot of people mulling around. All my employees were the big guys from the warehouse. I brought them over. I called them up. You know, they're all excited. To, hey, uh, you get some action. Yeah, yeah exactly. overtime. <laughs> I did say that. I'll pay you guys oh. double time. Meet me there. All I need to do is stand around and look tough. Yeah, in Compton. Yeah, that's a scary, scary place. So... Um, Anyway, so I sent my employees home, and we went back to the place where the truck uh, started. The truck started, yeah, yeah. So we parked our. I have to be careful because I have to make sure I get the names wrong because I don't want to to protect to names protect, to protect the innocent. Well, yeah, no names were changed to protect the innocent. So as, as and this was always. a long time ago, so I doubt that this would be uh, traced back. But anyway, so I'm there. Um, can you cut for a second? So yes. Wayne got too, he got too wound up. I had to calm him down. We had to confer to our attorneys about what we can I had to calm him down can, is really what, what happened. Yeah. Got so, too oh, excited. My attorneys are calling there. So no. Anyway. Um, so we're, we're, you're so now we're back. Standing, we're standing in front of the uh, place where the truck was. And I see uh, a storage lot across the street where there's trucks. I'm like, oh, maybe it's in here. So I, I you know, there's an, a, this is like, You uh, break and enter to no, no, trespass? No, no, no. There's like a concrete block or something like that. So I step on the concrete block and I look over and I'm looking inside the yard and I hear a voice off to my right. And the voice says, what are you doing? <laughs> and I look to my right and there standing in front of me is the scariest looking I had ever seen in my entire life. This guy was, didn't have any shirt on, Tattoos all over It's his chest. winter and snow's pouring down in California. He's got like scars all over the place from knife wounds. I'm, I'm not making this up. I didn't take a picture of him, of course. But so I'm like, I look, took one look at him. Maybe we get him on the Meanwhile, show. Paul was down putzing with his car down the street. Or like, took one look at him. And the, well, the, I hopped down and I said to him, Oh, this is where I got the car stolen. 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 This is where I yeah, you should call him the shanker or something, right? You know, we're gonna something? cut. We're gonna cut through some details that I don't want to uh, put on camera. But we ended up hiring the guy to be our confidential informant. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So greasing the skids, so greasing the skids. Well, we'll put that section of the story. Just on the know, shelf. we just need to know that it's there. There's some sketchy players involved here. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so we had that guy uh, in our camp. So we got information on Jimmy. Uh, the guy who had stolen my car. <laughs> so, anyway, the guy. Well, actually, the guy. The guy that. Uh, uh, the, the guy that we uh, hired gave us some tips on where Jimmy might have gotten rid of the car. None of those panned out. But to make a long part of the long story short, um, we then that that part of the section didn't quite work out in terms of getting the car back. Um, so we'll put Dead that end? again. On no the leads. Show. No what? leads. Leads, but they didn't go anywhere. But anyway, so me being very frustrated now about the car. So, so the one thing that the guy had said, our gang member tattoo, giving us information. He seemed like a nice enough guy to want to He help. was a totally nice guy. <laughs> I, if he didn't look like a guy that would literally rip my head off before ripping my ears off, just to make a point, if I cut him off in traffic, he was actually a nice guy. So, uh, but anyway, uh, we'll leave that aside. Um, See, we, we don't judge. That's why no, we don't judge. We don't judge. That's why we don't judge. Except when we do. Except when we do. Yeah. But so, you did, and, and it didn't work out for you. Because he would, he, he'd probably be your neighbor now. Well, hold on. So <laughs> he told not. us that the, the Jimmy had sold the car to somebody in uh, Wilmington for 700 bucks. I had insured for 60 grand. <laughs> I'm like, 700 bucks? I'm like, man. You could have made some money on that deal. I'm like, you sold it cheap. <laughs> 
I almost insulted me more than anything else. You know, at least if you steal the car and take the car, whatever, you, you know, you know I, I, when it was driving at 100 miles an hour <laughs> on Gardena, I said to myself, you know what? That's the most the car's been driven in the last five years. I said, I deserve to have the car be stolen because I, I, I haven't driven it that much. And again, it didn't look like this. It wasn't blue. It was kind of really, really beat up black. So anyway, so, um, so I got frustrated. So he said, Al, uh, uh, Wilmington. So me and my assistant one day went down, actually two days or three days, went down oh, to you Wilmington. You flip over your old Thomas guide. Yeah. You start checking off streets yeah. in Wilmington. Absolutely. Well, it, you don't even need to. You just drive down the main street. And then there's body shop, body shop, body shop, body shop, body shop. So um, I learned some things. I learned that you can go anywhere in LA if you have a very big suburban, all right? and you dress like, not like me right now, but if you put on a polo with like an AT&T shirt, you walk around with a clipboard, looking at telephone poles, oh, yeah. and writing down, you know, writing I down. Got, uh, I got my uh, uh, hard hat tool belt and, yeah. oh, and you get that I, have, I have a phone uh, diagnostic set. I was down on a bad section, looking over fences and stuff like that. A guy in a homeless camp came up, started coming towards me or whatever. I pulled out my clipboard, looked at the pole, wrote down some numbers. Guy took one look at me, turned around. It's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, so just walk around all over the place, writing down the names of the numbers on it. By the way, the telephone poles and all that. Yeah. It's got lots of numbers on it. All right, focus, man, focus, focus. Okay. Yeah. That's me, though. Usually, you've been telling me that. Yeah. So anyway, I was with my assistant, same one who left the keys in the car, um, trying to find. Trying to get a little, trying to, get a little payback. We're for traveling that. in the BMW, walking down there. We're looking for stuff, and we're talking, and he's driving, and I'm checking off shops on my printed out list of things to look at. And he's like, you know, Wayne, it's kind of funny because you guys are always looking for this truck. That I, and I, I remember seeing you go down the street the other day. A truck drove by and you went like this, looking at the truck, everything. It's like every truck that goes by, you look at. Like, and he points, he's like, like that one there. And he points to the side of the road. And it's the truck! The same panel truck. The same panel truck that had still been there with a stolen car. And it was on the side of the road and the police were there. And they had some guy down on the ground like this in handcuffs and all that stuff. I'm like, oh my God, they got him. They didn't get him. Different they got guy. his friend. <laughs> yeah, he got away. So anyway, I go up to the cops. I'm like, oh, this is a stolen car. And this, this, this cop that was there was like, you know, he was just directing traffic and he's yeah. like, who is this lunatic? You know? So uh, uh, don't ever approach it, cops yeah, in, in an reality, space that's, like that's, this. That's verbatim what was in his head. The air bubble said, who is this lunatic? Absolutely 100%. So they said, Detective Takata, who I had spoken to on the phone, is coming or whatever. And that's like, so, so I'm like, so anyway, so Detective Takata showed up and I'm like, ah, oh, Detective Takata. So he's like, and he's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I drove by and I saw the truck. He's like, and he didn't believe me. He didn't believe, I, 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 I was honest truth. I was just driving in the neighborhood. He didn't believe me. He thought I put a truck, because we had seen the truck come back the night before, it's so long, I cut out some stuff. But we had seen, we knew the truck, we knew where Jimmy lived, we knew where it was, and the police told us to just sit tight and don't worry about it, and they would handle it. So I said, I want to put a tracker on the truck. They said, no, you shouldn't, you, we will arrest you for impeding uh, in a police, police investigation <laughs> if you put a tracker on the truck. And also you can't put a tracker on the truck unless you have permission of the owner. But then I called Golden Foods to see if they would let me put a tra tracker on the truck. No. And they said, sure, but we don't own the truck anymore because the insurance oh, company owns it. They have to, yeah. So no one really knew who owned the truck, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so Tekta Takata is really pissed at me because he thought that I was... Um, well, what's the odds that you would see that truck? Like one in a million? Well, well, well I'm, 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 given I'm in the, the area. Given that you're snooping around. I'm snooping man, around in, in the area in where this guy plays. And I'm there every day. So now that I think about it after the fact, pretty good. If yeah. he's there and I'm there, and this is a big truck. It's not like a little Prius or anything. It's a big truck. So anyway, so at this point, supposedly they pulled him over. Jimmy got jumped out of the truck and got in the way. So um, they brought in the police helicopter. So I'm standing there in the BMW. They told me to get the hell out of there. I'm like, ah. So like they, they said, go back to the Pelican, the shop here, which is only about a mile and a half away. So I said, I know I'm going to see Jimmy walking back. To, uh, to his house, because I know where he lives and all that stuff. I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna see him. I'm just gonna see him on the side of the road. But I didn't, I didn't. But it's anyway, probably a good thing anyways. The police helicopter swirling around, like this, you know, what do they call it, the ghetto bird? Yeah. You know, trying to find the guy, and there's cops everywhere trying to find Jimmy, who stole my car, who got pulled over with this truck, all this, and they sent me back. So anyway, we got a phone call later on that night at midnight, Jimmy made it back to his house unscathed from our confidential guy or whatever. Anyway, 
So the story goes after that is that the police then raided Jimmy's house, but he wasn't there because he's a, Jimmy is a slippery cat, man. Not really. Well, he's got, he's evaded the cops, what, twice now? Three times? That's not that hard, I don't think. Well, you know. <laughs> no, knowing what I know now, maybe hard. And maybe if you commit murder, sure, they'll come get you or whatever, but I don't know. Uh, it seems, yeah. Anyway, we'll leave, we'll leave that on the table. Oh, that's right, that's what yep. we Yep, no, no. Anyway, the end of the story is not as exciting as the middle, but after a while, after a, uh, after a long time, we said, screw it, we're just gonna knock on the door. So we knocked on the door where Jimmy was living and it's his mom's house and et cetera, et cetera. And my private detective tried to scare his mom into giving him up because it's, you know, blah, 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 blah. Tried all these things or whatever. And finally, you know, we couldn't figure out how to get to him. Except so we, I, I'm not gonna say we gave up, but we put it on pause for a minute. Like a month later, Jimmy was caught driving a stolen car on the freeway in a high speed chase, crashed the thing. They got him, they nailed him but he wouldn't tell us where the car was. So, and then my private detective went to go visit him in jail and he's like, oh, you got me, where's the car? Jimmy's playing hardball. You can imagine that this has taken 150 hours of my time at this point. And I was done. And, and mental done. sanity. I'm done, so you know what? Well, what? let's see, high speed pursuits, yeah. tracking into Compton, battery, and, and now you're done, 150. I should have, I should have taken this. That well, if you had awesome. it, it wouldn't yeah. have been a bad yeah, deal. Yeah, I didn't have that at the time, I don't think. Um, it would have been made a different story. But, um, and I'm pointing to the tank. Uh, but, um, so long story, he went back to jail. Uh, I went to Vegas with the family, I remember that. Uh, there's a couple more details, but they're not, they'll just make the story longer. Um, a year later, I get a call from Detective Ducat and he sends me a picture. He says, I think we found your car. And sure enough, here's the car. And I was like, oh, yeah, I got the car. Where was it? It was, a, it, was in, it was a stolen car inside of a stolen trailer attached to a stolen truck in a lot that they invaded in Compton. And everyone on the internet told me, oh, the car's, the car's been parted out. It's on its way to China. It's you're, on its you're, way to you're, Thailand. You got little it's tears. These, no way it's being, blah, blah. and I'm like, you know, everyone's like people. really thinking high level and the car's parted out and all that stuff. It turns out there's something I didn't realize. Thieves are collectors too. So <laughs> they liked it a lot. They're like, no, we're not gonna mess. We're just gonna hang on to it. Until, case, yeah. case, in case you need a smash and grab well, later on. Yeah, they're not out Get to part it out. The guy who stole it, sold it to the collector or whatever. And they said, this is, this is you know, we'll figure it out Let later it cool on. down for a while. So thieves are collectors too. And to make a long story short, so the car, well, I didn't own the car anymore at that point because I'd filed the insurance claim and they paid me up. So the insurance company, by the way, bought the, the 914 rally car in, as a replacement for this one because this one was no longer as a constellation. I, I, I like that car too. Yeah, no, it's a good car. It's a good car. We'll show a shot in a second. Yeah. But um, so I had to go buy the car back at the auction. So I had to sign up I for remember IAA called, auction. I remember you called me up and said the car's coming up. I, it was it was when it was kind of when we first started talking a long while back, and uh, I go, man, that's crazy. You could buy the car back for. I'm gonna buy the car back. So they paid me 45 grand and bought the car back for 22. Yep. But 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 I'm at the auction and I'm not gonna screw this up. This is my first car. This car spent 1,500 to 2,000 hours working on. Tears rolling down your face. Well, I, I saw it. I saw it for the first time. Literally, I'm like, oh my God, it's really here. And my wife's like lipstick was still in the thing. <laughs> the nothing, nothing had changed. Nothing had changed. So I went to the auction and the, the title got screwed up. So it was 10 weeks it was sitting outside. So I went to 10 weekly auctions and the first auction I went in and there's a sign that says you must have a safety vest to go in the, the so yard, so yeah. I bought a safety vest and I'm walking around. And nobody else has a safety vest on but me. And, and, you know, the guys, I, I, I'm, I'm the <laughs> biggest outcast there. Everyone looks like, you know, a junkyard dealer. And I'm dressed like this with a safety vest on. And people are asking, are you an attorney? And I'm like, I've never been asked that before in my entire life. I'm like, do I look like an attorney? I'm like, oh my Apparently God, I must look did. like an attorney or something. No, no, no. So then I dressed down after that. See, they judged you. They did. They did. They That's okay. You. That's, That's a, judging up though. Yeah, That's maybe. I, I guess. Bad. 
Yeah, but kind of I, an upgrade. I, I, I guess. In some circles, I guess. Uh, yeah, kind of a downgrade in others. But yes, it's, yes. It's one of those weird things. But anyway, so I get there and I placed a bid online for the car when it came out. This is 10 weeks of going to 10 auctions in a row, not buying anything, just walking around. Um, so I finally placed a bid online so I wouldn't be screwed. And I was there in person. And I almost ended up bidding against myself. Because, and, and then the car came up and they said, oh, you're an online bid. And I said, I didn't know what the reserve would be. So I had to bid like 35 or whatever. I didn't want to overpay. I didn't know what, the, what State Farm would have. So they put 22 down. Anyway, I got the car, came back. Oh, that's funny too. It's like, while I was at the auction up there, I had a key to the car. They didn't have a key to the car. So the car was open. So I locked it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And then I came back that afternoon and the car was unlocked. I'm like, how'd that happen? So I locked it again. And then Slim I came Jim. back that afternoon again and there was a note written on the windshield, stop locking the car, the camera sees. And I have a photo of that too. I'm like, oh shit, the camera, what camera? So I locked it again. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, they couldn't see what engines in the back and all that stuff. So I didn't want anyone bidding against me. It's my car, you know. No, no one was going to outbid well, me on this car. Well, it's the insurance company's car because they paid you out, but it became your car. Kind of like a foster kid. Yeah. You know, kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, your kids are still so I, crying from the birthday party. So I get the is. car back. We still got enough memory card in this. <laughs> so I get the car back into the shop and it's sitting right exactly where it is right now. And I took a picture of it and I showed it to people and I'm like, look, I got my car back. And they're like, oh my gosh. I'm like, they really messed up your car. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh, they dented it here. The paint's coming off here. I'm like it's all scratched there. I'm like, oh no, I did that one. How about that huge dent in the back? Oh, oh no, that was me. When I backed my own car into the other car. Nothing's worse than when you back a car you own into another car you own. You get damaged twice and you curse yourself twice and you feel twice as bad. So that's what happened with this one. I backed it into my old truck. I never got that fixed. So um, they're like, and then I like, I like, I, I came over here. I pointed. I'm like, look, see this part where the paint is peeling on the fender? That's new. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, that was well, pretty, that was pretty it, funny. You got a little, they didn't uh, do anything to the car. You got a little extra pocket change had, on on. Had like seven or six miles on it since yeah, it was. Yeah, but you, you know, you 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 got 45. Paid 22, you got a little cash to spruce her up after that. Well, that was a consolation surpri uh, um, uh, prize for the you know 150 hours spent tracking it down. So, the end. All right, you wanna go for a ride? Yeah, let's do it up. All right. We finally got there, to the ride. Oh, there, is. there we go, so now. That's what a proper six sounds like. That's not right. Don't rev sure. up. Let's don't, go. Don't rev up cold engines, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Oh, it's my clutch that's in. That's why. Uh, All right, ready? Uh, yeah, let's hit it. Let's put, as as and roll it. again. Feels uh, like a Cadillac Eldorado. Yeah, we got a lot more room in here because we're squared up. Compared to that one. Deluxe uh, removable shift, top. Shift pattern is completely different. It's a little different than the Alpine, yeah, huh? She moves up pretty oh, good. Yeah. I mean, the Alpine is fun and sounds like fun, and this one is fun and goes like stink. Too. This has that sound that I love about Porsches. This is, you know, like a 911 air cooled is, you know, that's, that's top notch. Yep. And the audio at the track is great. I once had a guy with a Corvette come after me, a light, and he just took off, and I was on his fender the whole way. And he came back to you going up to the light like this, and he's like this. He's like, that's not a four cylinder, is it? <laughs> Shout it out the window, like, no. 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 Like 911F. Remember the commercials? Snow Porsche. Surf. Do you remember that? Yeah. They were horrible advertising. Uh, but that was, I don't even remember them having the sixes. It was always like, you know, I, you know, dare I say it, the poor man Porsche? Well, with the sixes, they didn't. Um, they deliberately hobbled that car. They put the slowest 911 motor in it, they had 911 to. T, because they didn't want to compete with 911s. And uh, they didn't really put any uh, go fast parts on it. They just sort of threw the engine in there and, and asked people to pay as much as they did for a 911, which didn't really go very, very far with people. Here's something that's nice. What's if that? If I push the button, I can put the seatbelt on. And off. And off. Yes, see, yeah, I care about your safety. It's got a little lopiness, but yeah, it, it it makes it sound good. 
That's true. The 959 sounds that way too. I, I, I don't think so. I, honestly, I think this is a, a much, uh, to me, this feels faster than the, the 959 just because it's, it's, you know. It's more raw. It's raw. It doesn't have weird uh, hydraulic lift suspension with magneto shocks and, uh, and an awful looking steering wheel. Steering wheel's top notch here. Yes. And you know, it looks like even did, you know the proper hardware. No Phillips heads in there. Wow. Yeah, loud pipe saves lives. Pipe that saves guy's lives. dead anyway, so it's yeah, nothing we can do to help yeah. him. Pipes aren't helping that dude. You know what's crazy is you know the motor like right then was like yeah maybe 5200. Yeah. Uh, sounds like 10,000 RPM. Oh yeah. Versus. The uh, the uh, Renault, you know, you're at like 7,000, and it doesn't sound as scary as exactly it's... putting out 100 horsepower. Yeah. All right, much easier than the Alpine. Oh yeah. Well, the door is four times but wider. Still, but still not as not as easy. Doesn't as... doesn't doesn't really help when you're an inch off the ground though for us. Uh, That's true. Old timers. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think, Sandy? Give her. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know. This thing hauls ass. Is that a technical term I can use on this type of program? Sure. Yeah. Uh, definitely has got some uh, punchiness to it. Were you guys able, was the cameraman ever to keep up with us this time? Or? We had some complaints no, about- No, he's waiting. No, he's we, saying no. We had some, we had some complaints Seriously? about uh, the chase car getting left in the dust or something. Uh, I know. Uh, we're going to have to get, uh, you're going to have to upgrade the truck. That's true. Maybe we use one of these cars as a chase car. Yeah. Maybe, uh, you know, uh, what do you got that's SUV, like a Lamborghini or something hidden or? The Ferrari. A Ferrari yeah. SUV, no. Anyway, so you drove the rally car. You've uh, driven this one. Uh, no, you haven't driven. I have not driven this either. one, but I could tell totally different. The rally car was, was like smooth, never ending power. Yeah. This thing, you jump on it and it almost feels like it's, like you, you're gonna break the tires loose. Okay, so there's an important distinction between this one and that one. That one's a four-speed, so it's geared higher. This one's the five-speed. The five-speed is geared towards the low-power one at eight. Ah, so so you, when you put, uh, you know, as you know, when you put that transmission, the the low-gear transmission into a high-power horsepower high, horse, it's happy. High, high, high-powered ho horse, high. You, High horsepowered car. There you go, third time. Then um, you, you get a, a lot uh, more. It's a lot quicker. The yeah, Boxster's that's... the same way that we were just talking about. The the uh, it has still has the Boxster five speed transmission that came with the two five liter in it, but it's got three four with three hundred horsepower. Yeah, that 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 one I just remember going like I think I was going through Red Rock on three ninety five, mm -hmm. and there's some nice smoothy curves. Yeah. They're just really just nice. And I just remember kind of getting into it. And I was going like 85, 90, 100, it felt like, because there's no Speedo on it. Yep. And it just it just wound up and just was smooth as glass and kind of settled in. And it was just, that sound was just, it was wonderful. Um, kind of like this, but less aggressive. And it, it was louder, but less mean. I don't know how to explain it, but it was, it was a fun drive. Is certainly. there definitely a difference between a four and this six? And this is what people aspire to. And it's what I did, aspire to. I had this car before I started the company, Pelican, and this is what I want. I actually built the car. I think, so kids I today could get a 914 four and swap it out for what, like three, 400 bucks? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, nice uh, a couple of Chuck E. Cheese tokens, right? Yeah, not bad. No, it's a good project. Yeah, no, it is, it is. And it's, well, these, these freaking motors are insane now. I think they're like 20 grand, 30 grand. It's crazy. Yeah, bring a trailer. It's ruined it for everybody. Yep. So. Or, or not. Baby boomers but, buy, buying this stuff, something. I don't think I don't so. Know who's buying these things? No, I think big kids are baby boomers. Those are what, I don't know. Generation Xers? I don't, I don't know. know. So I'm let me check, sure. the, check the interwebs for that, folks. All right. All right, any, let's get out of here. Last minute comments or what? No, no, I like it. This, right, is, cool. a, this is a good keep. Oh, how embarrassing. What's going on? We ran out of gas. <laughs> I think. I hope this isn't the way of things to come. Yeah, Wayne. exactly. This is really have to be on camera. All right. All right, Sandy. That was pretty good, right? Great. Great videos today, Wayne. All right. Remember, if you want more, please hit the subscribe button. We'll keep going. Don't forget to mash the like, too. Mash the like button. Yeah, I think 
Podcast.